Yeah, I fancy the free dog in the next race. No, not a chance, Ray. The four dog will skate it. Hello, Arthur. Come to take me to the cleaners, then, eh? No, Phil, I've come to share my good fortune with you. Waterford Glass. It's not running, Arthur. No, 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 Phil. I'm referring to some exquisite stock I have just received from the Emerald Isle. Leave it out, Arthur. I'm here to take your money, not some iffy glass. Well, what about Tommy on the book? Would he like a little pocket calculator? Arthur, Tommy is a little pocket calculator. Now, come on, let's be having you. All right, 60 to 20 on the four dog. 60 pound to 20 on the four dog for 905. Mr. Arthur Daly. How about you, Ray, eh? Oh, no, thanks, Phil. Not on them prices. I'm gonna have a go on the tote. I've got to get a result, Ray. Anything to change my luck. We haven't sold a car for weeks. It's months, actually, but who's counting? My creditors are. Are you doing the four, dog? The three, dog, Arthur. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, all right. Hello, Sydney. Arthur. Yeah, great news, Sydney. Uh, I might even say tremendous news. I'd even go as far as momentous news. I have just acquired three and a half hundred weight of the Great Wall of China. Stop for a kip on the way round. I can't take any more of this. That's funny, Arthur. I'm just beginning to enjoy myself. Come on. Hey! I've got to do something, Ray. I'm ready to climb up the lock up wall. Except it's riddled with woodworm. I mean, look at today's post. Four bills, three charity appeals, and a beauty salon offering to remove my unwanted air. What we need is someone to remove your unwanted cars. And my unwanted stock. I've tried everyone. Nobody's buying. Bloody recession. I know. It's been so long since we've sold a car, you might as well hire them out. Yeah. Raymond, you're absolutely right. Why didn't I think of that? You will, Arthur. You will. Look, Arthur, how can you expect to compete with the major players? You know, firms like, um, what's his name, with Thingy? What can you offer they can't? What can I offer, Raymond? That is the entire point. What indeed can I offer? Remember, second-class motoring is better than first-class walking. Oh, Adam. Excellent. Virtually empty. Couldn't be better. Dave, large usual, please. St. Clement's for Ray and one for yourself. Oh, thanks, Arthur. I've got to deal with a drink to remind me why I come here. What? Having a bad time, Dave? You could say that, Arthur. Or you'd likewise say I'm having a disastrous time. Either way will be correct. I've started talking to myself, you know. What's that, Dave? Oh, it's bloody lonely in here sometimes, Ray. Oh, it's just recession. Dave, as a minority shareholder in this club, I feel it is incumbent upon me to do something to alleviate your problems. I have been working for the past four weeks on the most remarkable business arrangement. Four weeks, is it, Arthur? Seems more like four minutes. Yeah, time flies when business is booming, Ray. Dave, you are about to become an integral part of the Arthur Daly package deal. I can't afford a holiday, Arthur. No, 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 not that sort of package. Share the experience, share the discount. Hire the car of your choice. Full tank, competitive rates. One week's hire entitles you to a free space in an Arthur Daly car boot sale. It also entitles you to attend happy hour at the Winchester Club. A car boot sale? Happy hour. It's a great idea. One day a week, say between 12 and 1, when this place is as dead as a graveyard, we reduce the price of drinks by half. So that is a great idea, is it? To reduce the price of drinks for an hour by half. That's it? Why don't we go to the old log and give them away? No, no, Dave, you don't understand. By reducing the price by half, you get more customers in here. Well, that doesn't surprise me in the least, Arthur. If we made them free, the place would be packed. Yeah, but when the happy hour finishes, the price goes back to normal, or perhaps even a uh, little above normal. And the people will stay and continue to drink. And they stay and continue drinking because by then, they are a little mellow. By then, they will be warming to the sense of the occasion. And they are, quite frankly, by then, Dave, half Brahms. Who's this lad you've got helping you push the leaflets through the letterboxes? That's a good mate of mine, known him for ages. Oh, what's his name? Winston. Oh, now there was a leader, Winston. They don't make them like that anymore. 
Hey, Ray, there's someone trying to break in the lockup. Get out and whack him. It's all right, Arthur, but that's Winston. Oh, Winston. Where'd you want them? Hey, hang on. It dumped down over it. Oh. Ray? Yeah? I have a word. Yeah, all right. Just leave him there with Yeah? He's black. Just a minute. Come to come in here a minute, with. You know, Arthur, I think you're right. Well, He's black. You might have told me. I'd never give it a second thought. Well, you should have done. Why? Well, well, it's not me. I mean, it's, it's my customers. I've got some very funny types. I mean, how are they going to take it? I mean, it's nothing personal. You do understand that, Winston. Yeah, of course, Mr. Daly. It comes in all shapes and sizes. Ah, oh, 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 no, 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 no. No, don't misunderstand. I have a great regard for your people. They have turned out some of the finest netball players in the world. Arthur, he's not one of your people. He's one of our people. He's like me. He was born here. Yeah. Well, I, I run a very tight team. I expect very high standards. Standards? Yes. No drugs, no extramural activities, and no saxophone playing during working hours. Fair enough. So what wages are you going to pay me? Wages, Winston? Wages? We'll talk about wages when we see how you work out, Raymond. You'll be putting all the wrong ideas into this lad's head. Now, come on, let's get on with work. It requires great skill and ability. I only hope you're up to it. <laughs> How's that report coming on, Field? Nearly there, Sarge. Looks like we've got our own personal crime wave on here. Nine burglaries in our target area in the last week. Wherever it is, they're professionals. No prints, no one seen entering or leaving. Not youngsters. They're not nicking tellies and videos. It's all jewellery. Got to be fencing the stuff. Well, look at it this way, Sarge. Look, it's of overtime. Oh, yeah, for you, maybe. All I'm stacking up is days in loo. More list, ID. Right. We're on our way. Looks like we're in luck. Uniformed to just nicked some joker doing a break-in right in the middle of our little patch. Come on. Are you sure this is going to work, Arthur? This is a winner, Dave. I know. See, what I'm doing is I'm taking a leaf out of the government's book, playing on people's avarice. Let them have something for nearly nothing. I've discounted the hire charge, thrown in a free car boot sale. Bait to them. Some of them will buy in the end. Mark my words. Oh, I was referring to the people staying on and paying full price. What, for the drinks? Yeah. Yeah, of course they will, Dave. Same principle. I hope you're right, Arthur. Dave, as we speak, my highly skilled operatives are launching a major publicity campaign. Now it's just a matter of time. <sighs> Winchester Club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's here. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll tell him. Well, that was Detective Sergeant Morley. It seems that one of your highly skilled operatives has just got himself arrested. Raymond Daly still working for you? Yeah, of course he is. Thank you for helping the police with their inquiries. You're free to go. Oh, no, just, just, just a minute. You drag me out of a crucial business meeting, ask me about one of my executives, and then tell me I'm free to go. Why don't you ask me something really important, like what you ought to have for dinner tonight? Come on, I demand an explanation. William Enfield. Might as well charge him now. Charge? Who? With what? Oh, just someone we caught red-handed doing a break-in, that's all. Says he works for you. Winston, what's going on? Ah, so you do know him then? Well, of course I do. He works for me. Hear that, Field? Get your notebook out. Uh, sorry about this, Mr. Daly. 
I did tell you that it comes in all shapes and sizes. Yeah, do you get that, Phil? Looks like we've got the fence as well. Uh, Winston, Winston, you will come to realise that Mr Morley has been nominated for the first brain transplant operation. Why is it everyone seems to take such an instant dislike to me? Saves time. I blame you for this, Raymond. Leave it out, Arthur. I will not leave it out. When Winston had finished his letterbox drop, you'd vanished. He goes looking for you, knocking on doors, peering in windows, wandering through gardens. Next thing, some overexcitable member of the local neighbourhood watch felled the police. He had no leaflets left, and you weren't there to explain. The result that Morley starts behaving like knacker of the yard. What exactly were you up to? I was giving me sales pitch to a potential customer, using me initiative like you told me to. You sure it was only your initiative you were using? She's promised to come and hire a car. She. I knew it was a bird. Look, it's all right, Mr Daly. I'm sure you won't want me working for you after all this. Why not? Nobody tells me who I can employ. And certainly no one like that Mellon Morley. Look, get some more leaflets. Put one in your inside pocket so that if you stop, you got one. All right? All right. And Ray, keep your initiative under control. Get down the car lock. Come, I'll give you a lift. Thanks, Ray. I've uh, parked it out front for you. And remember, if you want any servicing done, well... Just bring it back. And don't forget, the car boot sale is free for all hires. Oh, I hope to see you before that. You've, uh, got my number, I think. And as with all Daily into Europe cars, madam, you get a full tank of petrol. They're the keys. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr Daly. Bye. Bye. That's the thought you want to be turning your charm on to, Ray. I'll try and remember that, Arthur. Well, one down, 33 to go. Good boy. I'm just going over the road for a quick one. It's Klondike time, Dave. I can feel it in my bones. All I can feel in my bones, Arthur, is chronic arthritis. You can study this ladder, will you? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that right. Here, yeah, Winston. Huh? The red box off from Mr Jarvis. Right. Excuse me. There you go, Mr Jarvis. Happy motoring. Excellent. Thanks for your help. Lovely. Here you go. Thank you. Right, who's next? No, it looks good, Dave. This place will be packed, you see. You'll have to get some temporary help in. Temporary help? The last time I had temporary help in here was when Chelsea won the cup. <laughs> place was awash with flare trousers. You're getting plenty of food. You know, pickle trout volleyballs, kedgeree on fried bread, cordon blue stuff. I'm just going to check on the lads. Raymond, my son. Winston, my lad. I knew it, I knew it. Wasn't that a great idea I had? All gone? All I heard? Every single one, Arthur. Except the old Cortina. Nobody would be seen dead in that. We just thought we'd come over to tell you the good news. Well done, boys. There'll be a bonus in this for both of you. Right, where have you parked my Daimler? Your Daimler? I'm sorry, Ray. It's all my fault. Don't worry about it. Well? It was a false address, Arthur. Never heard of him. You mean he's done a roadrunner in my Daimler? Yeah, it looks like it. Have you been dumped on me by one of my rivals? I'll work it off, Mr Daly. Work it off? Work it off? You'll be here till doomsday to do that. I really am very sorry. Being sorry won't get my car back, Winston. How could you let him hire my car out? How could you? What am I going to drive? Well, there's still the Mark II Cortina. Last lot out to me, and I'll check them against the report. Right. Uh, pearl necklace, no distinguishing characteristics. Um, 
one ring set with three rubies, Victorian brooch. Now I'll have you strapped in it. Ray, can you calm him down? Raymond, I'd be obliged if you could stop him giving us his Richard the Third. It's wearing out my Wilton. Hello, Arthur. I think it might be time to leave, eh? It's not enough I get my pride and joy nicked by some Jack the Lad, is it? Oh, no, no, no. Let's turn the rack a bit more. I couldn't get your run of the mill car thief, could I? I have to get some pocket desperado who thinks he's Britain's answer to Ayrton Senna. Roaring all over the town, perpetrating traffic offences at the speed of light. But that's not enough, Raymond, is it? Isn't it? Oh, no, it's not. Inspector Clueless here pulls me in and starts charging me with a, a string of traffic offences. I demand that you come and see what I am currently driving, Morley. Help yourself, Sergeant. Observe the furry dice, the furry upholstery. This is what I am reduced to. I must say, Arthur, I think you're getting a bit old for the furry dice. I think he's telling the truth, Sarge. Thank you, Constable. His Dane has just been reported speeding up the M1. The trial car gave chase but lost him. He's really shifty. If my car is damaged while you lot are playing cops and robbers, questions will be asked in the house. Ray, I'll see you back at the lockup. I'm going to see my insurance broker. You want to push? Arthur, are you there? Oh, Ray. Hello, Mr. Cooper. I'm looking for Arthur. I've been down the car lot. There's no sign of him or his cars. Has he retired? Arthur? No, not at all. He'll be back later. Well, can I help? Well, yeah, I'm interested in that uh, red box all of his. Don't tell me it's gone. No, it's out on a test run. Well, what about all the other cars? Well, they're all out on test runs. What, all of them? Yeah, we've had a bit of a run on lately. <sighs> I shouldn't have hesitated. It's always the way, isn't it? See, Mr. Cooper's a regular Winston. Always buys his cars off of Arthur. Yeah. You pick up that clipboard for me, will you? Yeah. yeah, always bought them from him. Looks like I'll have to go somewhere else this time. Pity. I was very keen on that box all. Look, if you're a regular customer, the least we can do is look after you. Give us your phone number. I'll persuade the guy that's taking out the Vauxhall for a drive to try another car. Really? Yeah. yeah look, look, here's my card. And I'll see you all right for a drink, eh? <laughs> you leave it with us, Mr. Cooper. I'll give you a ring as soon as I've got my hands on it. Great. See you, Ray. Regards to Arthur. See you later. And just how do you propose to accommodate the man? The Vauxhall's out on hire. It was due back this morning. That punter only hired it out for a day. I remember him saying that if he liked it, he'd be back to extend the hire period. He hasn't come back. So? So, we repossess it. You mean we teeve it? <laughs> nah, not exactly. I feel really bad about Arthur's car. This will help make it up to him. There you go, my love. Now remember, it's pellets for the ferrets and carrots for the rabbits. And if you've got any left over, have a fry out. The point is, Tony, am I covered if my car is mistakenly hired out to a man who does a runner and crashes it? Is that what happened? No, but it's imminent. Now, come on, you're my insurance broker. What's the situation? All right, this key's that have done a runner. How did he pay? I don't know. The boy's hired it to him. Why? Does it matter? Well, yeah. If he paid by a cheque and the cheque bounces, you're covered. But if he paid by cash, you could be in stuck. Well, I know he gave a false address. Oh, well, that helps. Yeah, but it don't help me. Leave it to me, Arthur. I shall make inquiries. Now, while you're here, could I interest you in a tortoise? Fresh in today. <sighs> Too frenetic. There it is. Just down the road. Pull in, Ray. Wait a minute. It's not a problem. I'll tell him the car's due back. Yeah, what happens if he wants to hire it out for longer, eh? Complications. A nice clean bit of repo, that's easier. We just have to pick our moment. I'll get my hand on that joyrider. He'll be driving a Robin Reliant. I've got to pick her indoors up in a minute. Can you imagine her reaction when she sees me sitting in a Mark II Cortina? Just had a check run on the PNC, Sarge. I think you might find this interesting. Well done, Phil. You've got 
got news about my stolen car, then? Depends which one you're talking about. The white car, the Daimler. Uh, one hour ago, it was driven into the Newport Pagnell service station. Thank God for that. It's all right, then? Don't know. The driver filled up, then roared off without paying. Hey, hang about. What do you mean, which one? Only one car was nicked. Oh, no, David. This car you're driving, you say it's yours? Yeah. According to our computer, it was stolen two months ago in Brighton. Now, unless you've got a very good explanation, I'm going to do you for receiving a stolen car. Are you sure I can't give you boys something for all this trouble? No, it was no trouble, Mr hey. Cooper. All part of the Arthur Daly deal, Mr Cooper. I hope it gives you a great deal of pleasure. Thank you. Happy motoring. Touch me. West Midlands traffic... Well, if I understand you correctly, you claim you don't know how long you've had this court team. Why, why is it that reporters and police officers always use claim when they should say say or state? Claim sounds iffy, doesn't it? That's why you lot like it. With claim, you got some poor sod halfway to Dartmoor before you're even warmed up. You say you don't know how long you've had this Cortina. You say you haven't got the logbook. You say you don't know who sold it to you. It's all a bit vague, isn't it? Just got another report on the Daimler Sarge. Seen going the wrong way for one way alley in Birmingham. Eluded pursuing patrol car. That's all right, I've got it. Hello, Daly and... Oh, hello, Auntie. No, I haven't seen him for some time. Yeah, I'll, hold on, I'll make a note. Outside the shopping arcade. Right, I'll let him know when he comes in. Yeah, bye. Not looking good, Daly, is it? Yeah, it's obvious what's happened. If it was obvious, we wouldn't be spending the time of day in your private zoo, would we? Look, the bloke who done the road runner in my Daimler. What about him? Well, he's your man. Instead of harassing me, you should be charging up the motorway and catching him. Yes, but he's in your Daimler, isn't he? Not in someone else's Cortina. Oh, God, I'm going to have to draw pictures. I can see that. Look, before he went on the rampage in the Daimler, he must have had the front to dump the bent Cortina in my car lot. Diabolical liberty. I think you'd better come back to the Nick, don't you? Thank you, Mr. Telford Dibbley. Can I interest you in a parrot, Sergeant? You wait here, mother-in-law. I know what you need. <laughs> I won't be a minute. Hey, hey stop, thief! You, thief! Can't someone call the police? You, thief! Yeah. What are you talking about? I thief! Thief! of aggravation to me, Dane. Well, you can always drop me on the corner. I've got enough on my plate. I don't have to worry about you and some bent car ring you're involved with. I am not involved with some bent car ring. And I want to see my solicitor. For everything there is a time, for everything there is a solicitor. Any units, What's that supposed to mean? You can't see your solicitor. That's one of mine. Phil, there's two big cars he's got. I'm going to give you an official portion down the station, then you can make a statement. And if you're very good, I'll let you see yours. Look out! What's happened to Arthur? 
I don't know. He'll turn up. He always does. He'll be right chuffed about that box, though. I mean, right. he'll probably give us a bonus for selling it. He didn't get the last one. Remember that. You're right there, Winston. I'll have to remind him about that. Ladies? I don't know. You invite us out for a drink, and all you do is talk about work. All right, then. What do you two do, apart from chatting up two handsome young men? We do a bit of work with Linda's brothers. Come on, you lot. Let's go. In the back. I'm sure you don't think I'd steal a car and then take my mother-in-law for a drive in it. Mr. Dean Cooper, I am constantly surprised at what people do. You were clocked doing speeds in excess of 70 miles an hour while attempting to escape a police car in pursuit. I didn't know they were police. I assumed it was that maniac who attacked me on the high street, and I hope you're going to charge him. At the moment, I'm considering charging you, eh? I've got a nice list of offences, starting with the theft of a car. It's my car. I bought it. Don't tell me. You bought it off a bloke in a pub. You haven't got the documents. He's going to post them on to you, but you don't know what his name is. Why are you saying that? <laughs> Let's put it down to years of experience in the job, Mr Cooper. A very nice touch, nicking it with your mother-in-law. Hey? Such a charming old lady. What have you done with her? She hasn't been charged. No, not yet. She's been looked after by one of my WPCs. Whether I charge or not is largely down to you. What, down to me? Well, this is insanity. Why is it down to me? You put your hands up to stealing that car, and I will look very reasonably upon your mother-in-law. Do my best to give her out the case. I did not buy that car from a man in a pub. I have got the documents at home, and the man I bought it from was called Arthur Daly. Look, Mr Jarvis, either it's your car or it isn't. Which is it? I'd hired it from a man called Arthur Daly. You do well to pop up and tell Morley to stop minning around West London and centre his investigations in Rome and Brussels. I'm very big on the continent, you know. I'm into Europe. This is obviously the work of my business rivals. You don't really think I go swanning around in a bent car with early indoors perched on them fur-lined seats, do you? Oh, God. I'll get them. Ray. Right, then. What's everybody having, then? Oh, much though it pains me to turn away custom, it appears that Arthur is in need of your help. What's the problem? Difficult to tell, really. He's done a local nick. He's been on the phone to me demanding lawyers, insurance brokers, uh, Amnesty International. Boy, you can't go in there, old son. Yeah, there's a perfectly simple explanation to order this. It's been a completely... Mr. Diaz stand. is querying an item on the list of stolen goods on that last report. Which one? Um, one lady's wristwatch. You're being a bit previous, weren't you? Repossessing a car that's only a day overdue? Of course it wasn't. I'm not running an Oxfam shop. And now one of my major executives has cleared up this matter, I'll take your apology as read and I'd like to vacate these premises. You're free to go. So, for the moment, I shall be making further inquiries. I'd like the keys to the Cortina. The Cortina stays here. It's stolen property. And you should know that two of the cars you've hired out have broken down in the street on our ground. And we've stopped a further five that are without a current MOT certificate. Yeah, by the way, Arthur, I think you should ring Artie. She seemed a bit put out. Oh, God. Well, it never end. Now, apart from all this, after that conversation I've been listening to, which her indoors had with herself, I have now got nowhere to sleep tonight. Now, I know, I know, into each life a little rain must fall, but that doesn't give you two the right to pour Niagara on my careworn trilby. Yeah, leave it to me, Arthur. You've had enough for one day. Yeah, hello? Daily and... Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, right. I'll tell him. That was Morley's office. The Daimler was seen 30 minutes ago travelling high speed through a pedestrian precinct in Liverpool. Oh, thanks, Andy. I'll tell you, if we don't find who's responsible for these burglaries soon, I'm going to be facing a divorce. 
Oh, I can't see any patterns. Some are day, some are night, some are forced entry, some look like they've gone through the front door with a key. Feed in a man, Sarge. Take five minutes off. And on top of that, I've got Arthur Daly causing bloody havoc with his hired cars. Just a minute. We had a member of the public. Saw a grey fiesta parked round the back of that last house to be done over. That's not been eliminated yet. Get a list of all Daly's stock. All the cars he's hired out. See if there's a grey Ford Fiesta on it. No. Yeah. We're awake. Don't see why he should be sleeping. <laughs> so what do you think then? Don't yeah. seem to get many people in here, do they? <laughs> Don't start, Dave, off. You get 20 minutes and whatever happened to the drinking classes. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you reckon Arthur's going to spend the night then, Ray? Well, I don't know. He'll probably go home. So, who's for another then? Well, sorry, I'll get him in. No, you won't. It's our turn. I'm looking for Arthur Daling. So? Well, you tell me. You're his minder. I'm off duty. Tried his own? Yeah. One irate wife. No Arthur Daly. Do you want a drink? Not while I'm on duty. Like Ray said, Sarah, we're not on duty. All right. Can the same again, please? Yeah, of course. That'll double my takings for the night. <laughs> 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 What's going on? Where's Ray? Raymond? Oh, this is nice, isn't it? I'm tramping the streets looking for a cardboard box while my staff are having a back and alien orgy on my premises. Arthur, I do happen to live here. What do you want? What I want? I want them out for a start. Oh, right, we can take a hint. Come on, Sarah. No, hold on, Arthur. Hold on, girls. I mean... Arthur, this is my own. On which I hold the lease. Yeah, but there's nothing in the lease that says I can't entertain guests in the evening. There will be tomorrow. Yeah, hold up. Linda. Forget it, Ray. Yeah, but Linda. Check. Yeah, we can get off from, will you? Get it together, mate. That's a shimbun killing a fan tail, isn't it? Is it? Yes. Look. I'm sorry about this, disturbing you at this time of night. It is urgent and uh, I can't find Mr. Daly. Yeah, just like Arthur. When you don't want him, there he is. Selling your musical rocks and underwater windmills. Underwater windmills? Exactly. I've still got two gross of them left. Wouldn't it be easier doing that with the light on? What, and have your shabunking awake after night? You'll bang out of order, Arthur. And you've just ruined what was turning out to be a blinding evening. It's time you showed a bit of maturity and started thinking above the waist. Arthur, you might have taken a vow of celibacy. Doesn't mean the rest of us have to. Look, I am surrounded on all sides by major aggravation, and all you think about is getting your leg over. Oh, but it's not good enough. It's dereliction of duty. If this were wartime, I could have you taken out and shot. Charming. It's all down to me, then, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, whenever anything goes wrong, it's always my fault. Whenever it goes right, it's down to you. Thank you, Raymond. I'm glad at last you're seeing how things really are. Oh, I see how things really are, Arthur. I've had it up to here with you. You can get yourself another mind. I'll work all the hours that God give me, and for what, eh? Third world wages and first class crap. Now, I should live to hear family talk to me like that. All right, if that's what you want, that's what you get. When all those cars are back and that car boot sale's out of the way, you can leave. And don't come back looking for a reference. A reference? Don't worry. I'll be looking for a decent job, not ten years inside. I'm going to bed. You can keep on a couch. Right! Got them from Daly's insurance broker. Thought they'd brighten up the office. Good God, Field. It's just as well he hasn't got a sideline selling garden manure, isn't it? I don't want livestock clattering up the office. Well, what shall I do with them, then? We well, can take them down the canteen and ask them to grill them for you. <laughs> Where's that list of cars? Daly currently owns three Ford Fiestas. Two of them are grey.
Here you go, Arthur. It's a blanket and a nightcap. Large vodka. Good night, Rain. Yeah, good night, Arthur. Hanging, hanging on the door knocker. Not even a note. Whatever happened to love, honor, and obey? A bit like me, Arthur. Redundant. Hey, what you gonna do? I'll change later. Oh, I meant about auntie. I shall maintain a dignified silence. That always unnerves her indoors. Come on, move. Got a big day ahead. Car boot sale. Happy hour to Winchester. Happy hour. Pinko, madam. Okay. Right. One for you, love. There you go. Yep, another one here. Look, look, I don't want any more trouble from you. Hey? First one here gets first choice of pitch, right? If you don't want any more trouble, there better not be any ice cream in that canteen. Hey, hey, we can't take these in the car boot sale. Oh, yes, we can. He hired a car, I bought one. We're entitled to a free pitch. Too right, so what about opening these gates? What about all these lorries? They belong to people who hired one of your cars. Same thing applies. Bloody professionals. Ray, get over the lock-up, load up as much stuff as you can. Paris Originals, Turkish Tales, two can play at this game. We'll knock them out from the back of your car. Right. Winston? Yeah? Get those gates open. Right. Winston, let women first. Now, come on, darling. Give yourself a treat. On bath night, wrap yourself in one of these. I'll be back in a minute, Wynn. I'm just going to have a look round, yeah? All right. Eight ninety nine. dollars <laughs> How the Turkish towels going? Slow, Arthur. I'm not surprised. Bloke on that lorry selling them a pound cheaper. Right, not two quid off ours. Right. Here, Wynn. Wynn. Two quid off them. Yeah. Six ninety nine. Linda. Right. Hello, young man. How are you? Is it for your girlfriend? No, for my mother, actually. <laughs> Had a result with the dogs the other day. Can you offer me? Um, watch. Uh, I don't know. Perfume. It's nice. That is lovely. How much is this? Do you, Ray, you can have it for 20 quid? 20 quid? Yeah, my mum would love it. Done. I'll take it. It is a go, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah. 20 notes. There you go. Right, lads. Stick them behind the bar. All this stuff. I hope Arthur's right. I'm just going to the Winchester to change. When you're finished here, pop over the car lot, get all the vehicles back on site. I've had enough of car hire. Come on, keep your minute. Here, yeah, Winchester, have a look at this. Tasty, eh? Got it from my mum. Where'd you get this? I bought it from Linda. It's nicked. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> yeah. When I was waiting for you and Arthur at the station, they were going through a list of stolen goods. They were having a joke about this. She typed pimple instead of dimple. Ah, surely not. There must be hundreds of them. All in this manner, where one's just been nicked in a burglary. You're off for this watch, it's been nicked. It shows my suit and shirt. Did you sell them? Of course I didn't. Well, they've been nicked. Stuff your suit. What about this watch? That Linda sold me a dodgy kettle. Still thinking of crumpets. It's just as well you're leaving. Come on. Winchester Club. I've changed my mind. I don't want to go to the Winchester Club. Take me to the Arthur Daly car lot and wait for me. Yes, go. You take my advice, you won't buy a car from him. Linda Dealey, 31 Indleswick Road. 
It hasn't been the same since they abolished caning, birching and hanging. I had an MP in the back last week. Oh, yeah. Look, I want to get to Indleswick Road in hurry. Does this hearse do more than 30 miles an hour? See, what I want to know, Linda, is where you got this watch. It's Ben. And what you do is your business, but when you're selling me Yuki watches for my mum, well, that's mine, ain't it? You greedy cow. I gave you that to keep. I'm not out with the rest of your tat. Now get out of the way while we give this pair a bit of discipline. <laughs> Modern generation, they're all wimps. Can you imagine them fighting in a war like we uh, Yeah, yeah, all right. You, uh, you wait for me and tell me when I come back. Arthur, what are you doing here? Oh, someone's got to look after you, Ray. You'll find another two in the living room. You'll also find the stuff nicked from those house burglaries. I blame you for this, Field. Yep. If you hadn't suggested going to that other address first. As it goes, Arthur Daly will now be claiming the insurance reward, and that pains me. That pains me greatly. Uh, Mr. Morley, you uh, managed to clean up the mess all right? Ray? Winnie, come on. I didn't know you knew karate, Arthur. Uh, there's a lot of things you don't know about me, my son. Perhaps I should stick around while you teach me, eh? Yeah, perhaps you should. Insurance reward, eh? That should make a tasty little learner. Split three ways, Mr. Daly. Arthur. Yeah, of course. Split three ways, Winston. <laughs> oh, come on, Ray. Hurry up, move. We'll be late for the happy hour. Dave, you'll make a fortune out of this. What are you going to do? Well, let's hope they stay on when prices go back to normal. Don't worry, Dave. I think they're just warming to the sense of the occasion. Remember what I told you? Dave, I think I hear the end of your happy hour. Thanks, Arthur. What you been doing with my car? Driving it around England. If you take my advice, you'll get the timing checked. It gets a bit noisy at um, 130. Thanks for the help. <laughs> 